So the history of our species is one of infection. Whether it's big pandemics like flu, like SARS, or just the daily battle that our immune system has to make against bacteria and viruses. And it was back in the 1920s when antibiotics were discovered that the shift occurred in favour of the humans, if you like. But since then, and a growing upon us, is this threat that we now have of antimicrobial, antibiotic drug resistance. We demand the best antibiotics for ourselves, for our families. In industry and in agriculture, antibiotics used well you know, increase productivity. But even when used appropriately, antibiotic resistance is on the rise and is now a global problem. This is my hospital in leafy Oxfordshire, and it is a normal hospital. And the problem is, in normal hospitals around the world, we are finding that the antibiotics that we used a couple of years ago are no longer working. Where we used to give tablets, we now have to give intravenous therapy. Where we used to give intravenous therapy, sometimes we have no antibiotics at all. And it's not just bacteria. We know that in some areas, 20% of HIV strains are resistant to therapy. And here in China, in the last 12 months, we have had reports of Tamiflu-resistant flu. This is a global problem representing all strains. This is a Petri dish. And on this dish, you can see blue dots. They are fully drug-resistant E. coli. And these are bacteria we are now finding on intensive care units, in wounds, in abscesses <coughs> around the world. These bacteria are resistant to all the antibiotics that we have. And this is now a major global problem. But this isn't just localised little clusters of infection. Tuberculosis affects nearly 2 billion people. That's nearly a third of the world's population. Back in 2010, 3% of TB strains were multidrug resistant. 2011, 77 countries had extreme drug resistant TB. And then over the last 12 months, we've heard of the rise of total drug-resistant TB in India, in Iran, in Italy, South Africa. Now, there's a lot of controversy over this, but if it is true, and there is total drug-resistant TB circulating, maybe circulating for some time, this is going to be a major global problem, and it's going to be causing someone a lot of anxiety. We cannot hide from this anymore. Things we take for granted, chemotherapy, complicated operations, these will all go. The costs are substantial. I don't have data from Asia, but in Europe, there are 25,000 excess deaths a year because of drug resistance. One million days in hospital due to MRSA alone. And the cost of this is 1.5 billion euros. The answer, new antibiotics. We need 10 new antibiotics by 2020, apparently. This is not going to happen. It requires industry, government, the private sector, academia to work together in an environment where the marketplace is just not welcoming. IP protection is not um, substantial enough. Incentives are not there. But we do need data, and not just big data. We need surveillance data to know where is antibiotic resistance occurring in Asia, in Europe, in America. This is all isolated at the moment. We need joined up thinking here. Who's prescribing, to whom, and why, and when? Where is resistance developing, and really, is it impacting health? We do not have this information, and we need that <coughs> before we can go forward. We need to control how antibiotics are prescribed. It won't be... Long before doctors are not permitted to prescribe at will, this must be defined at higher levels internationally to say which antibiotics we can use for which patients. But beyond that, over-the-counter antibiotics are available in some regions, and this is a great driver of resistance, and we need to control this. In areas where healthcare systems are stretched, antibiotic resistance is not a priority. Quite understandably, there are other things to worry about. And yet here, this is where often there is a hotbed of resistance growing as prescription is not controlled. And this is where we need to invest externally and put boots on the ground, investment in place, so we can find out about resistance developing in these areas. Forget healthcare for a minute. More antibiotics are used for the creation of the food on our tables in agriculture than for healthcare alone. And before we get onto the horrors of painting antibiotic paint onto the hulls of our ships, we need to be aware that there is antibiotic resistance now in the water and in the soil, and this is coming through into human disease. Could this be the future where we are isolating our patients because of the bacteria on their skin? I have a colleague of mine who is now teaching her doctors on the intensive care unit to practice as if it was the 1920s, as if they had no antibiotics to work with. We have effectively lost 100 years of medical advancement to some of our patients because of the way we have been behaving. The answers might be straightforward. Washing your hands prevents infection spread. But actually, above and beyond this, we need to find an environment where innovation is encouraged and permitted to allow us to find new antibiotics. We know that in the last 30 years, 
only two new antibiotics have come forward. So my question to you then is, how are we going to devise an environment and encourage innovation so that antibiotic resistance can be countered and new antibiotics can be developed? Thank you very much.